Hi, this is Mark from Productive Computing, and in this video, we're going to talk about a new function that was released with the FileMaker 17 platform, specifically for FileMaker Go, called Get Sensor. This new mobile function allows developers to tap directly into the iOS device sensor information and reveal all kinds of things that were never before possible. Things like battery, location, attitude, speed, acceleration, magnetic, air pressure, and even step counts. All right, you won't want to miss this video. Now, for those interested in what we do here at Productive Computing, I recommend you check out our website and see all our products and services that we have there. We provide professional consultation and development services, as well as a variety of plugins. We also provide FileMaker and QuickBooks hosting and discounted licensing. And our newest offering is Productive Computing University, where we have both paid courses for our own products, as well as some free courses specific to the FileMaker 17 platform that you definitely don't want to miss. All right, and if you like this content, consider subscribing to our channel, where you can stay in tune with not only our updates, but other industry information as it becomes available. Without further delay, let's dig in. So I think the best way to get started with GetSensor is to actually look at that FileMaker help file right online. The best way to get there, or one of the best ways to get there, is to open up any calculation dialog box. And since this is an actual function, locate that panel on the right side of your calculation dialog box. Put in the word sensor. That will bring up the GetSensor function, where you can either use it right in a calc or explore it more by clicking on the question mark here found at the bottom right of that dialog box. That will open up a browser, assuming you're on the internet, and it will locate the get sensor help for this particular function. Now, functions like get sensor are not exactly new. In fact, we already had a function called location and location values, which are actually introduced with the FileMaker 12 platform several years ago. So you might ask, well, what is get sensor and how does that differ? The location and location values are there in place and people have been using them for years. Get sensor now extends that to a whole nother level where it's now a dedicated function with parameters that can accept multiple types of sensors. And those sensor names or parameters, if you will, for the get sensor function are listed here in the help. We have battery level, battery status, and so forth. And you can read through these and learn about them a little bit more. What I hope to do in this video is take a first-hand look at these sensors, and we'll do that now using FileMaker. Okay, on the screen I have a bunch of FileMaker products here. Uh, in the foreground I have the FileMaker Pro application, which is known as FileMaker Pro Advanced, and that's running on my Macintosh. It is connected to the actual file which is being hosted on AWS somewhere in the cloud. In this case, the file name is called get sensor. So I'll be doing all my programming here. Then on the left side of the screen, I have my iPad, which is running here on my screen. And so we can see how its results might vary a little bit from my iPhone, which is on the right side of the screen here. So incidentally, if you're looking at the help and you look down the list of sensors, the last one on the list is something called available which indicates what's available on that particular device in terms of what's available for sensors. So if I were to run this particular function on my application here, my FileMaker Pro Advanced, it's going to return nothing because there are no sensor capabilities on the actual desktop program. On my iPad, there is. So let's run it on my iPad. I'll push the refresh button. And of course you can see these are all connected. So the important thing to notice is all the different sensors that are in fact available. This is an iPad Pro from a few years back. And if you were to study this on your own, you would quickly see that all of the sensors are in fact available except for steps, the step type sensors. So let me run that same refresh button from my iPhone, which I have here. So I'll push that with my button and click refresh. And now you'll see on the iPhone that it does include the step floors up, floors down, distance, and count. So the very first thing you should concentrate on when, when you think about using Get Sensor is what's actually available to you based on a given device. And you want to put your error trapping in and around that idea because you may be testing for steps when in fact the device they're using has no capability for that. All right, so that's the first command. Now let's go see how I constructed that. I'll click on the refresh button in the script that's associated with that. It's called list of sensors is the name of the script it's tied to. So I'll select that now. It's a simple script that populates a field called list of sensors and it's calling the function get sensor and the reserved word that we're using is available. 
in quotes. And that means get all the sensors that are available on the device, and then we simply commit the record so that it refreshes the record. All right, so let's take a look at battery. So in this case, I'm going to be focusing on my iPad on the left here, and I will push the refresh button with my finger. And you can see here, if you look closely, 59% or 0.59% battery level indicated. And then this is a one. And if we bring back our help screen just for a minute, you can see that battery status one is unplugged, which it is. Okay, now let's take a look at location. Here I'm showing both the location and the location values portion of the get sensor. I'm going to push refresh on my iPad. And you can see here very quickly, I got the location information. If you wanna change the accuracy in meters, I can do that as well. If I wanna to go to 30 meters with a 10 second timeout, I can do that and click refresh. And it's taking a little longer now because it's trying to get better accuracy. In fact, it says down below, location received improving accuracy. And there it stopped. And technically I should have a better or more accurate location and location value. All right, let's hide the iPad and bring back FileMaker Pro Advanced and take a look under the hood of this particular script which refreshes both the location and the location values. Let's just take a look at one of these so you can see how it's constructed. We have the get sensor and we're using the reserved word location. We put extra logic here that says if location accuracy as specified by the user is empty, then put the value of 100. Otherwise take what the user has input. Likewise, we do the same with timeout. If it's an empty timeout, put 10 seconds. Otherwise take what the user has specified. Now let's hop over to help real quick and read a couple more things about accuracy. Accuracy is a number that represents a distance in meters. The default value for accuracy is 100 meters. Timeout is a number that represents the longest time in seconds it'll take to get the data. The default value for timeout is 10. The maximum value is 600. Okay, let's take the next section, which is attitude, speed, and acceleration. I'm holding the iPad flat while I select the refresh button. I'm also not moving it. Now I'll hold it at more of an angle, almost 90 degrees up and down. You can see the numbers change. Now's a good time to introduce some terminology when it comes to attitude and acceleration. There's the idea of roll, pitch, and yaw, and X, Y, and Z axes. First, let's take a look at roll, which is also known as the Y axis. Here's pitch, also known as the X axis. And here's yaw, known as the Z axis. I found a file on the internet that I thought would be very helpful. The file is called Sensors 3, and I'll put a link down below in the description of this video. I'm going to start polling the data while I take a quick walk down the hall. Okay, I'm back, and you can see here that we have a nice survey of data every second or so. If you want to take a look at this file and download it for yourself, it's very clever how it was created because when you create a new record, it auto enter calcs for each one of these sensor results. And it really is a great file because it goes the extra length to calculate miles per hour and things like that. Okay, next we have magnetic. I'll click refresh there. Okay, then compass. I'm going to put the accuracy down to 30 meters and the timeout 3 seconds. This works a little bit like location. Now I'm going to move the iPad 90 degrees to the right and click refresh. And now 180 degrees, give or take. Okay, and we'll jump over to air pressure and select refresh on that one. 99.419159. And I happen to have a weather program here. I don't know if this is going to tell us anything that's of meaning or significance. Uh, I do have pressure at 1013.8, so I don't know if, of course, this is as measured by the internet, whereas my iPad is measured directly. Now for steps, I'm going to grab the iPhone. Okay, now FileMaker Go has some preferences here to allow motion and fitness. So in order for you to use some of these sensors, you actually have to allow them on. Uh, the first one, location, would be one request that it's going to ask you the first time you attempt to get sensor for location. And then motion and fitness is another one. So I'll turn that on now. So here I have the start count and stop count, and I want to show you how to build this script directly. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is start count. It'll clear any install on timer scripts. Then we set the seconds to zero. That's this over here. We're going to count the seconds as each second goes by. We'll count them. And then we'll start the counter. Okay, let's look at the on timer step counter now. And you can see here that I'm incrementing the seconds by one each second. So when I invoke that, it will start counting the seconds. Let's do that. As I start the count, you'll see this go up one, two, three, and so forth. All right, so this is going to be the number of seconds passed between the time that I started counting and the time that I stopped counting. So I only need to count the steps when I click this stop count button. And that's when I want to fill in this information. So let's go program that now over here at stop count. So the first thing we'll do is install on timer script and set to nothing, which stops any timers that might be running. And then we can actually set our field. So we'll set the field. And I have a field already set up for that called step count. And that's where we're going to pull the get sensor. And the name for that, we know that from our help, is step count. So as I program this, it'll be step count in quotes, and then comma, and then the number of seconds. So I think I have a step seconds here field. And that's my first get sensor for counting the actual steps. Then I'll duplicate this and get to the distance. And this will be step distance. So all I have to do is change this because I duplicated that. And that will still use the step seconds as the number of seconds that passed between measurements. And then the third one here will be step floors up. And we'll set that to the right field. Duplicate that, change that to step floors down and change our one word here. And that should be all we need for that. Okay, I'm clicking start count and I'll walk a few steps and come back. 34 steps with a step distance of 30 meters with no floors ascended and no floors descended. Hopefully you found this information useful. I'm pretty excited about the get sensor option for FileMaker Go when we're making our FileMaker apps. I think that the battery information alone is very valuable because oftentimes we run synchronization routines and those synchronization routines take time to run at times and it might be nice to know if the battery is running low so that we know not to do them or tell the user to plug in and things like that. I think also the accelerometer might be interesting uh, to be able to shake the device and have options to change functionality based on how they shake or how they move or how they angle the device. All of those things are available right now to app developers with the existing iOS apps that we're familiar with. So why not incorporate some of those features with FileMaker Go as needed? I hope you enjoyed this video. For more content like this, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel, liking our Facebook page, or following us on Twitter and LinkedIn. We also have a monthly newsletter describing the latest happenings here from Productive Computing, as well as other industry-related news. Thanks for watching.